Thank you, Your Excellency. I feel deeply honoured to be invited to address this assembly. And all Your Excellencies, I've never been at a table with so many Excellencies in my life. <laughs> and my brothers and sisters. If I may react spontaneously to Ambassador Mark's talk, uh, off the cuff, sorry translators, I also have been moved to discover the deep similarities between Christianity and Islam as I've traveled around the Middle East and the Maghreb. But much more exciting for me have been to discover the differences. Because you enjoy being with somebody who is the same as yourself, but you learn much more when you meet people who are different. And we're living in a world which is increasingly molded by the fear of difference. Xenophobia, the fear of the stranger, because they're not like us. But what I think Christianity and Islam, all the three Abrahamic religions can all do, is actually to show us that difference is not to be feared. The difference enriches us. At the heart of our faiths is the belief that we are infinitely close to God who is infinitely different, infinitely beyond us. And if the one who is utterly different, the creator of heaven and earth, is also the one closest to us, then we should never fear the stranger in his or her difference, because they will be a source of richness. So I think Islam and Christianity, above all, to whom most human beings belong, should be at the forefront of reducing the fear of difference. Why is this not the case? We see a world in which religion is very often violent. And I think that this is a characteristic of modernity and not of religion. Modernity is deeply tempted by fundamentalism. It began with scientific fundamentalism. The belief that everything could be explained through the sole means of science. We saw the rise of market fundamentalism, which believed that everything can be solved by the invisible hand of the market. Most of the 20th century has been molded by nationalistic fundamentalism. We saw the terrible wars that disfigured Europe in that time. And if we see religious fundamentalism today, it's not because religion is inherently violent, it's because religion has become infected by a particularly modern temptation to fundamentalism. So we have to reclaim our ancient heritage, both religions, of welcoming the stranger. One of my close friends was a bishop in Algeria, Bishop Pierre Claverie, who was assassinated in 1996. And he came to love Islam. He called himself a guest in the house of Islam. And what he loved is what Islam could teach him, what he did not know beforehand. He said, I not only accept that the other is other, a distinct subject with freedom of conscience, but I accept that he or she may possess a part of the truth that I do not have, and without which my own search for truth cannot be fully realized. I went to his funeral in the cathedral at Oran, which was filled with Muslims. And at the end, a young woman stood up and said that she had become an atheist, but she returned to Islam because of Bishop Clavery. And she said, 
he is my bishop too. And then 500 Muslims said, he is our bishop too. So what you see is that when we're courageous and we dare to listen and we open our minds, then we can learn from each other. Finally, on citizenship, which is the particular concern of this conference, in the Christian tradition, perhaps particularly in the Catholic tradition, the role of the state ever since the 13th century, perhaps under the influence of Islamic teachers, the role of the state is to guarantee the freedom of the conscience of the individual and of what until 10 minutes ago I would have called minorities, but I've learnt not to any longer. The state has to give to its people the possibility of nurturing deeper identities beyond itself. It is the guardian of their freedom. This was the witness of the great German Lutheran theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer in his opposition to Nazism. So in recent years we've seen a rise of a talk of populism. The people have spoken. This is very dangerous. We saw this in the 1930s. We see it today in the United States and even alas in my own country. Minorities were crushed in the name of the people. But we need to protect the independence, the dignity of every person in their pursuit of the truth, knowing that it is the stranger, the one who is different, who has something to teach me. Thank you very much.